I'm going to read from Psalm 22 as we prepare to come to the communion table. This psalm is uh, most commonly called the Psalm of the Cross. often quoted psalm in the New Testament. Written over a thousand years before the cross. Written over a thousand years. They say when this was written, crucifixion wasn't even known to man. It wasn't even used as torture at the time. This is David prophetically. Yes, in his own pain, in his own agony, but he took it to another level. Prophetically. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? And from the words of my groaning. Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not hear. And in the night season, and am not silent. But you are holy, enthroned in the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in you, they trusted, and you delivered them. They cried to you, and were delivered. They trusted in you, and were not ashamed. This is Jesus. <laughs> Others have cried out to you. Others have called to you. They've been heard, and they've been delivered. And he says, this is Jesus, but I am a worm. And no man a reproach of men and despised by the people. All those who see me ridicule me. They shoot out the lip and they shake the head saying, he trusted in the Lord. Let him rescue him. Let him deliver him since he delights in him. But you are he who took me out of the womb. You made me trust while on my mother's breasts. I was cast upon you from birth from my mother's womb, you have been my God. But not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Many bulls have surrounded me. Strong bulls of Bashan have encircled me. They gape at me with their mouths like a, a raging and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It has melted within me. My strength is dried up like a pot's herd, and my tongue clings to my jaws. You have brought me to the dust of death, for dogs have surrounded me. The congregation of the wicked has enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They look and stare at me. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. I remember when I first heard it say that Jesus suffered the worst death that any man has ever suffered. And yeah, and you know, there's part of me, my skepticism or my thought process, well, I don't know about that. He suffered greatly, but what about people that are burned at the stake? Or, or what, what about this? What about that? And I would just process these things until I grew in the grace and the knowledge of God. And I, I get this this opening of my eyes to see that yeah he, he did suffer more than any man because you know what there was the absence of God we live in a day and age God is everywhere he is everywhere he is always there but at this moment in time God stepped back he called out to him and he wasn't there. He was so absent that from 12 noon to 3 o'clock on this day, one of the scriptures says the world went dark. And then I heard somebody say, well, there was an eclipse. No, it said the world went dark. I believe it. I believe it just what Does an eclipse last, last three hours? <laughs> I don't know. The world went dark. The sun did not shine. It's my best definition of hell. 
My best definition of hell, someone who tried to back me in a corner, Rick, explain hell, that hell is the absence of God. We can't fathom what's that like. Regardless of how far we've tried to run or hide from him. And Jesus found himself in that place. But you, O Lord, verse 19, do not be far from me. O my strength, hasten to help me. Deliver me from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth and from the horns of the wild oxen. You have answered me. He, he, he saw hope. He found hope. But, it, you know, at that moment in his time, it wasn't his hope. It was Diane's hope. It was my hope. It was the hope of the world that he saw. Some, I've read different commentaries and, and different opinions or teachings on this psalm. And some people even, some, some people say that, okay, this is the cross. Now we get into the resurrection. Going to, it's, this this uh, psalm is broken into two parts. From verses 1 to 21 and 22 to, to, to 31. And they say that, well, the first part's a crucifixion, the second part is a resurrection. I, I, I beg to differ. It was called the Psalm of the Cross. I say it was all the cross. Now, I don't do that just for the sake of trying to be right or, or disagree. But Hebrews says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. I would like to think that as we read now from 22 to 31, that Jesus is now thinking on the cross. He's sustaining himself through this torture, through this brutality. What he suffered from the Garden of Gethsemane and up to this point, that this is what sustained him. This, this was the joy that was set before him. He endured the cross. What was that? I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, glorify him. And fear him, all you offspring of Israel. For he has not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, nor has he hidden his face from him. But he cried to him, he heard. He's not hearing me right now. But he hears. He's going to hear the days, the ages to come. It's going to be set in motion. It's going to be put in place that God will reside with man. Salvation has come. Verse 25, my praise shall be to you in the great assembly. I will pay my vows before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him will praise the Lord. Let your heart live forever. I'm going to die a sinner's death so that Veronica's heart can live forever. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before you. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth shall eat and worship. All those who go down to the dust shall bow down before him, even he who cannot keep himself alive. A posterity shall serve him. It will be recounted of the Lord to the next generation. They will come and declare his righteousness to a people who will be born. That he has done this. He has done what? He has done this. He has died. He has hung on a cross and taken the sin of the world. We come to the table. So I want to share with you just uh, briefly um, something that the Lord showed me personally. While we were in Cuba, we were at a pastor's home one afternoon and uh, they fed us. And they have a, a, a nice house, a nice piece of property, and they have, they have pigs, they have rabbits, they have chickens, they have guinea pigs right in their backyard, all these animals. And um, the pen had about 12 pigs in it. 
And、uh, I didn't realize this that they put pigs in a pen, and all they have enough room to do is to stand up, move around, and eat. And other than that, they can't move because they're getting them fat. I felt so sorry for those pigs. I saw the rabbits. There had to have been a dozen rabbits at least, all in pens. And、uh, I was kind of telling the pastor how much I like the taste of rabbit. And he said, Tomorrow afternoon we'll have one of these for lunch. Unfortunately, we didn't go back for lunch. They had chickens and they fed us some pork and、uh, cooked the pork right outside. We, we sat there and we ate on a picnic table outside around all this wildlife. And we ate, maybe there w a s 13 pigs in that pen the day before. And we were sitting there eating this pig, and the Lord so clearly showed me that, you know, everything you're eating and, and everything that sustains these people for food is all around them. And to get them to the table is very messy. But you don't see that. I was sitting eating at the table. Thank goodness it was pork. There was not a drop of blood. Not a drop of blood. Someone has said with Isaiah 53. Brian's on his, I read this in his book. He said, he said, here's how Jesus works. He took the burial shroud and he made it into a tablecloth. I kind of sat there at the lunch table thinking, you know, just imagining what this pig went through to get to this table. And we even talked amongst ourselves that if, if, if some of us could see what. Has to happen for some of this food to get to our table. That's why a lot of people turn, decide to be vegetarians, I guess. They just, it's just not pretty. But really, and I was going to keep the kids in here this morning. I was going to challenge them so that Reeb can be in here and just,、uh, just so that they could be near. But I, I, I want to get a little graphic. Well, I, I think I've never, seen, I've never seen a hog or a pig slaughtered, but I guess what they do is they just slice the neck and Put it up by his legs and it's quick. Boom, dead. A lot of blood, but boom, dead. Rabbits, I've seen a rabbit killed for slaughter, for eating. Boom, dead, if done right. Boom, dead. Boom, dead. As the sheep led to a slaughter, it wasn't quick for him. Like, do you think they take the rabbit and they beat the rabbit up and they take and they kick the rabbit and they, they, you know, look at the rabbit in the face and say, You are a nasty rabbit. You are a worthless rabbit. I don't like you, rabbit. And you bang the rabbit. No, you know what? Harm. They just throw the rabbit on the ground and, and, and cut off some of his hair. And they, they say they, they, they took his beard and ripped it out of his face. And they beat him so bad that. They couldn't tell who he was. No, they wouldn't do that to a rabbit. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. And he calls us to the table. And he wants us to see blood. He wants us to see his body broken. He wants us to see blood.、Uh, someone once said to me, Rick, you're almost mournful at Good Friday. And I, I, so I examined myself. And, and maybe, maybe kind of, but you know, it's just Good Friday. No, I'm not mournful, but I certainly on this day choose to remember like no other day. We come every Sunday and we remember. But Good Friday, <laughs> Good Friday. And it was so earth rattling. It was so historic. So much happened in those three days. So much happened on that first day, on that Good Friday. That the world went dark. So, what I ask of us today on this Good Friday that we come to the table and we, we just ask God, Lord, 
just like, I mean, I, I'm so, as a pastor, we, the four of us, thanks guys, just, we went up and we prayed before the service and, and all three of these guys prayed and Jordan started it. And I thought, I thought, you know what, as, as an uncle, as a father, as a pastor, as a friend, I thought, they get it. <laughs> when Jordan started praying, I'm thinking, he gets it. I didn't teach him to pray that way. He gets it. He has seen. He has really seen what this table means. Rachel, I saw your post on Instagram. I heard you pray this morning. I'm thinking, she gets it. She gets it. We get it. And here I am. Here I am. Worship's not just a one-time deal. Here I am. I'm here to worship again. I'm here to worship more. And I'm here in obedience to your word to take this, your body, that was broken. Can you imagine the disciples the night before? Last night, Thursday night, Monday, Thursday, that they're eating and Jesus just takes the bread and he says, this is my body. This is my body broken for you. They had no idea. <laughs> they had no idea. Maybe some of them, maybe John had a glimpse. But they hadn't quite gotten it. I've come to the table my whole life. Since I was 11 years old, however old I was, where you're allowed to take communion in the Anglican church, I've come to the table, and, and I want more, Michelle. I do. I want to see more. I want, I want to see more. I want it to affect my life more. I want to be able to sing, hallelujah, he's risen. Hallelujah. No more shame. No more sin. No more pain. No more struggle. But free. Free to be. And remember the cost. You know, getting there, living in Christ, living in the freedom, living in the resurrection power. See, Jesus, it says that Jesus learned obedience through suffering. And the more I learn to worship, specifically at this table, the more I see and the more free I become. A shroud turned into a tablecloth. I like that. I really like that. Blood on the table? This is a new covenant in my blood shed for the remission of sin the penalty of sin for the power of sin and ultimately one day the presence of sin no more no more so what I want us to do using our imagination this is this is the 12 noon hour this is this is the time where it's now gone dark. It's now gone dark. I'm gonna ask Alexander and the, the team to stop playing, come down to their seats, and just in silence, come to the table. As the Holy Spirit speaks to us all, corporately and individually, that on this Good Friday, we become more. We want more. We look for more. We become more of a worshiper. We become more into the likeness of the Lamb of God. who took away the sin of the world and lives forever, now and forever. Come to the table this morning.